on AM 1480 WLEA, The Newsmaker Show. Here's Ryan O'Neill. And as promised, we have on the line with us Hornell Mayor John Buckley. Mr. Mayor, thank you for joining us. Hey, thanks for having me, Brian. What a gorgeous day Isn't here in nice? Maple City today. Beautiful out there. Let's start out with, um, well, I think it was last week we got an email from Hornell City Hall about the uh, the water, um, a big water tank is going to be uh, worked on. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, so the, this is part of a uh, $6 million upgrade and investment into our water distribution system in here here for the city of Hornell. And, and this goes back several years. In fact, it goes back to, uh, uh, you know, when Sean Hogan was still the mayor. And, and, and these, these projects just take so many years to, you know, come to fruition, to, to you know, to come online. Um, but we, we've talked about it intermittently. Over the years, uh, you know, on the radio show or in the newspaper and those sorts of things, but this is the this is the summer where the new water tank will actually come online. Now, um, you know, our water system is is kind of you know out of sight, so people don't really think about it. You know, when you when you go to turn your water on or your hose or or whatever, you know, you, you kind of just expect that water to always be there. You don't really think too much about it. We kind of take it for granted in in a lot of ways. But our existing water tank is is approaching 50 years of age, and uh, uh, you know, some years ago we, we had it inspected, and and uh, you know it's starting to show its age. So uh, you know we we've got a lot of use out of it. Obviously, going on 50 years, it was time to make that investment. But not just in the water tank, but uh, uh, the water plant itself. Um, you know the electronics and a lot of a lot of things up there. Um, you know if you walk into the water plant, I always kind of joked around. It's like Walking onto the set of Lost in Space um, <laughs> has all, all the old, uh, you know, the old-fashioned uh, diodes and knobs and lights and buttons and and all that stuff. So you know, we're we're going to bring that, uh, uh, you know, in, into the, uh, you know, into the current times and you know, modernize that. So it'll be a lot more, uh, uh, you know, easier to handle and efficient. Uh, but you know, the water tank itself, though, so so how our water works is we have one main storage tank and 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 that creates the the pressure so when we take that offline um and switch to the other other tank you know that, that's something that we haven't done before but before we do that we have the new tank already built but we have to have the new piping and new valves put in place so that's so that lies in where the where the hiccup is going to be so so on the night of july 9th uh, approximately eight o'clock that night uh we're going to be taking that tank offline, or to, or to switch the valves and switch the piping over to the to the new one to have those things in place. So you know there, there will be a disruption, but this is uh, you know for, for folks like for most folks listening and and like you and me, Brian, this is kind of a, a once in a lifetime event. Um, you know, switching the switching of a tank because these things obviously last approximately 50 years. So uh, you know, once you do it, you don't have to worry about it. For a long, long time, uh, but it's a it's it's a really nice upgrade, something that we've you know, been working on for for years and years and years. And uh, you know, this is the summer where it finally, where it all all the pieces finally come together. And this is not going to affect uh, everybody who's on Hornell City Water. Just uh, certain areas. I was reading. Let's see, Upper Bennett Street, Lincoln Street, Dennis Avenue, uh, Howard Street, and a few other streets. Yeah, it, it'll well, it'll definitely affect all water users to varying degrees. Uh, we, you know, we expect very low water pressure or even no water pressure uh, in some areas. Uh, you know, we we do have water tanks up in the hills in certain neighborhoods that uh, that fill up and feed those neighborhoods just to create the the pressure from above. Uh, so we, we we do expect there to be uh, you know people without water, but this is one of those things that we have to do. In order to make the switch over, so uh, you know it's a it's an inconvenience. We're we're you know we're obviously doing it overnight, so most people will be asleep, and and hopefully uh, you know the inconvenience will be uh, very minimal. Uh, but we want to make sure that uh, you know we going forward that we have that quality water and and you know uh, the water that we've all uh, you know kind of known and depended on all these years and we want to make sure that you know we can still provide that so and that and that's part of this project it's you know it's one of those things i i always talk about 
in the Board of Public Works meetings how water and sewer are the two biggest things that we rely on, but we never really think of. You know, when when you turn on the faucet, you know, what it takes to produce that water, or when the water goes down the drain and goes to the wastewater plant, uh, you know, what it takes and all those processes that it goes through before it goes back into the Canisteo River. So, you know, a lot, a lot goes on on both ends of the spectrum on that. So this is, um, like I said, just, uh, you know, a very big project and, we're, we're glad that it's coming to an end. It's been a, kind of a, a long haul, but uh, we're, we're getting close. Speaking with Hornell Mayor John Buckley, well, no sooner does uh, St. James move to their new location than uh, COVID-19 kicked in uh, locally. Uh, having said that, the transition itself uh, went very well. And as we all know, uh, St. James uh, stepped up to the plate very well and uh, took care of uh Everybody who was suffering with uh, COVID-19. What about the old St. James building, uh, Mayor Buckley? What do we know there? Yeah, well, the old building, well, before before I get into that, uh, just let me say, you know, Brian O'Donovan and his, his staff do an amazing job, and we're so lucky to have them, so fortunate to have them. And, and I, you know, I do, I do feel bad in a way because, you know, it seems like no sooner were we cutting the ribbon to open the new facility than all of a sudden COVID hits, and, yeah. you know, all the everything changes, and, you know, and what should have been, you know, maybe more of of a prolonged celebratory, uh, you know, time, um, you know, in a time of reflection, really just you know, almost in an instant went into crisis management uh, because of COVID. So, uh, but you know, hats off to uh, Brian O'Donovan and his staff and all the doctors and nurses and and everyone up there who just has done an amazing job throughout this whole ordeal. Uh, yeah, but switching gears to the the old hospital, the, the old building. Uh, obviously, that's still owned by Trinity. Uh, I have been in talks with Trinity about the future of that building or future of that site. So they, they do have a process to go through, and, and and because of COVID, everything has been delayed. So you know, no no surprise there. Um, you know, a, a lot of things, and especially in government, have been pushed back, put on hold, put on the back burner. Uh, you know, and, and this is no exception. So what their process is, they have to. Uh, they have to put the building out to auction, um, so that there'll be an auction period. If if there's no interest, then uh, you know we're going to uh, you know look at our options. I, I know one of the options is demolition of the building, and we've talked about that uh, to some degree, and 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 developing it. Uh, but but who knows? There there has been uh, you know a little interest. I, I think some people kind of you know putting their sticking their toe in the water about the building, maybe repurposing parts of the building so uh you know there, there are options out there uh but the main message is you know we're, we are working with them we're not just uh, uh you know letting it sit idle uh you know we don't want obviously we don't want an empty building sitting there you know any longer than uh than need be so it's uh, those conversations will continue and um but you know these things take time too you know nothing nothing happens overnight we're just talking about the water project you know that's uh you know, about five years, six years in the making. So these these things do take time, but we'll get there. Okay. Speaking with Hornell Mayor John Buckley this morning, um, let's talk phase four. This has not been an incredibly popular uh, phase uh, in the uh, COVID recovery. Phase four was originally going to include movie theaters and gyms, and then that got pulled uh, by the governor's office at the last minute. Uh, how's that gone over locally, Mayor Buckley? Well, I, you know, I think there's a lot of frustration, a lot of confusion on phase four, you know, as well as some of the other phases, to be honest with you. Uh, you know, it seems like there's there's always, you know, the information always comes at the last minute or, in some cases, after the fact. Uh, you know, phase four in particular, uh, you know, we were obviously hoping for, you know, gyms to be included in that. Uh, you know, the YMCA had put together a plan. They were uh, prepared. We had a lot of local gym owners doing the same thing, you know, had all the precautions put in place, the cleaning, the disinfection uh, between users, you know, all of that. They had their plans. They were all set to go. And then at the last the last minute, seemingly, uh, the, the rug was pulled out from under them, and the governor did not include that in phase four. So, you know, that, that's very frustrating because you have – institutions like the YMCA where 
parts of their business are allowed to open. So they have the pool opened, uh, you know, at, at least to a degree. Uh, they've had their child daycare operation running throughout, but they can't open their gym. And obviously, you know, they're not the only gym in town. We have several others. Uh, you know, those folks are, are disappointed and frustrated. And, uh, you know, and I've been working with, uh, with Jack Wheeler at the county and, you know, and we're trying to, you know, get movement on this. I've been in touch with the, the governor's office and, you know, trying to, you know, trying, trying to get some more information. You know, when, when are you going to allow it? And, and he, you know, even pushing him, you know, expressing uh, frustration on our part. And, you know, it's not just here in Hornell, it's everywhere. This is, there's a lot of folks that are frustrated with it, but you know, even with shopping malls, you know, the governor hasn't allowed shopping malls to reopen. But you can go to Walmart and Lowe's and Home Depots and and all these places that are just you know, you go on a Saturday or Sunday and they're just you know mobbed with people. So I, I think people are getting a little frustrated. Uh, you know, we have been taking our steps to you know get back to some sense of normalcy. Um, and, and, and don't get me wrong, you know, I've been cautioning people, you know, don't, don't go too fast. You know, you don't want to take two steps forward and take, uh, or, you know, take one step forward and two steps back. You don't want to do that. But at the same time, I think, uh, you know, it, it is time to start opening some of these things and, and gyms in particular. I mean, let's be honest, a lot of, most of these gyms are disinfecting and cleaning there's, um, you know, their workstations, their equipment between users. They were doing that before COVID. So I, I really don't, I, th- I think it's time just to reopen some of these things. I really do. Um, you know, I've been talking to the YMCA officials here locally and, and there's a lot of frustration and, you know, we'll, we'll continue to advocate and, and try to uh, push forward. And, uh, but as you know, with, with all things COVID, you know, things don't just change week to week or day to day, but sometimes hour by hour. So, uh, and we'll see how it plays out. We're speaking with Hornell Mayor John Buckley. Let's take a quick break. Uh, we'll be back in about 90 seconds with more questions for the mayor. When we come back, we'll talk about uh, the fireworks plans for the 4th. Court's auto collision. Hi, Bill. Never seen an insurance job. We both can't make money on yet. Bill? And yes, I still have a free loaner car. Uh, Bill, I, I just called to... Uh... Court's auto collision. Day route 36, South of Canisteel, 698. 9900 online at com. Bill, for the first time in my life, you have left me speechless. I am Bill McCourt. Wow. Checking in now with meteorologist Rob Carroll, who says we're going to have a sunny week. Yes, we are, Brian. We're in between two weather systems, one off to the west bringing rain to Wisconsin, the Dakotas, and Minnesota, another one to the east bringing rain to Albany and New England. In between, we've got sunshine from about Milwaukee to Detroit to Buffalo, all the way out to uh, the Syracuse area, and that's where the nice weather is going to sit right over the top of us. Lots of sunshine today. We should have a high somewhere between 80 and 85. Sunrise was at 537 this morning. The sun sets tonight at 851. Clear skies are in the forecast for the overnight. We're going to be about 55 to 60. We're partly sunny tomorrow. It's going to be 75 to 80 tomorrow afternoon. And by late in the day, there's the chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm. Any storms end tomorrow evening will turn partly cloudy. We're 55 to 60. Brian, partial sun's back Wednesday. So is the chance for an afternoon shower or thunderstorm. Warm Wednesday, 80 to 85. We'll see more sunshine Thursday and Friday. Back with Hornell Mayor John Buckley. Uh, Mayor Buckley, the mayor, the uh, plans for the uh, fireworks on the 4th. Yeah, so we're, we're still having the fireworks, uh, firework display on Independence Day. Uh, you know, obviously with everything going on and, uh, you know, back when we were in the, the planning stages, we had suspended the, the parade and all the festivities at the park during the daytime. Um, but, you know, back, back when those conversations were taking place, still had restrictions on gatherings and, you know, how many people were allowed and, uh, you know, those sorts of things. So, you know, we, we, we thought it was prudent to suspend those activities. But we still wanted to, you know, make sure that we had a fireworks display because, you know, honestly, Brian, there's been so much taken away from us, uh, you know, from residents, from citizens, from, from everyone, you know, throughout COVID. We didn't, we didn't want to take the fireworks away. Uh, I know a lot of municipalities and communities have canceled their fireworks, but we wanted to make sure that, uh, you know, we had something where folks could look forward to seeing, something they could, you know, go down at night and see. And, you know, and it's not, and fireworks are a little bit different than, uh, you know, having a party all day long at the park, right? So, you, you know, you basically, you drive to wherever your favorite viewing spot is, you watch the display and get back in your car and go home. So, 
you know, we, we felt that that's an important thing, uh, you know, to celebrate our country's independence and, you know, like we usually do. And, and, I, and I think we're going to have a really good firework display this year. Uh, you know, we partner the city, we partner with Hornell Partners for Growth every year. And, um, you know, we, we kind of uh, split it up a little bit and they, they kick in some extra funds. So we're going to have a really nice firework display. We're, we, we try pushing our vendor to, you know, get some of the larger fireworks this year. So they go up a little higher. Um, those, those things are not cheap. I'll, I'll tell you, <laughs> they're the bigger, the fireworks, the more expensive they are, but you know, it's worth it. Um, we're going to, ha- I expect to have a, a great show and, you know, we're just hoping uh, mother nature cooperates and we have, uh, uh, you know, a nice clear night for it. Are you? Have you ever come up on Ashball Hill to watch them? A lot of cut. You'll see the cars lined up uh, 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 up and down the hill on the uh, night of the fourth to uh, watch the fireworks from up here. Yeah, it's really amazing if you you know if you drive around on the fourth or you know the night of the fourth where people park because they they do go up on Ashball Hill, they go up on uh, Gypsy Road. I, um, you know, all all of the hills. I mean, you know, we live in a valley, so there's no shortage of, of hills. Uh, but uh, you know, there's there's a lot of really good and a lot, a lot of cool viewing spots. And you know, just having lived here all my life, I've you know, I've <laughs> I've looked at uh, you know, viewed them from a lot of different angles. So, um, the, you know, there's really not a bad spot when you're you know down in that area. By the way, uh, HPG asked uh, WLEA if we throw on some music, and we agreed. So we're going to be playing uh, all the John Phillip music, uh, patriotic uh, marches and whatnot, uh, from 9 to 9.15 p.m. on uh, that Saturday night, the 4th this year. That's great. And, uh, of course, you got your, your new FM station as well, so people can tune in and and hear all those songs and uh, yeah it'll be on both 1480 and 106.9 fm yeah it'll be an, it'll be a nice uh, lead into the fireworks display oh sure oh sure we're speaking with hornell mayor uh, john buckley um congressman tom reed uh, have you spoken to him lately mayor buckley yeah in fact uh congressman reed and i uh speak on a weekly basis and uh you know especially you know through the the whole covid situation um uh, you know starting uh and, and honestly starting with the the whole nursing home um you know issue that we had with uh with covid that you know we started with phone conferences talking to you know department of health officials and uh you know officials from the governor's office trying to you know get movement um on on that and trying to get you know make sure the nursing homes have the you know the proper ppe and and staffing and you know obviously you know it's been talked about uh you know quite extensively but you know we there are a lot of issues and it wasn't just here in hornell it was throughout the state and even throughout the country to a degree uh but you know even coming out of that um you know, we we kind of turned the corner, and, and and the discussion started to be more focused on, um, uh, uh, you know, funding for local governments. And you know, we've talked about that and and the impact that uh, you know sales taxes is, is having on local governments and 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 their in their ability to fund operations. And and that's really where we are. You know, we're we're looking at the negative sales tax numbers from April and May. And you know they're in, I think, 28 percent and 37 percent in, in back-to-back months in, here in Steuben County, and and those are huge negative numbers for sales tax. So, uh, you know, the federal government has obviously been working on uh, a next phase of stimulus, and and you know, in the first several phases, they covered a lot of bases. You know, they covered employees, they covered employers, they covered individuals. Uh, you know, basically anyone with a social security number. Or you know it was getting a check. So, but the you know the one gaping hole was local governments, and you know we, we just talked about it at the top of your show, Brian. You know who who's the, who are the ones that provide all of the things that you depend on? You know who who, who supplies your water? Who supplies your sewer? Who provides your police, fire, and ambulance protection and service? That's that's your local governments. That's your cities. That's your towns. Your villages. And, and yeah, you know, we're the ones that have been ignored by the, by the federal government. So, you know, Congressman Reed, to his credit, has been working very hard week in and week out trying to push this forward to provide some of this funding to try to 
uh, you know, fill in the gaps that the sales tax um, is, is uh, or lack of sales tax is creating. So, um, you know, but as I said, we're, we're talking on a, uh, you know, weekly basis, and he's set up, uh, you know, phone conferences so we can, uh, uh, or not phone conferences, but Zoom conferences that, uh, you know, we're all using. So, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping you know, we've made progress, um, but we, we still need to get it across the finish line and, uh and hopefully everyone in uh, Washington can get their act together and get this done. You know, you talk about Zoom conferences. I'm sure you have a lot of those, Mayor Buckley. Uh, this is this is something that everyone's become uh, uh, pretty much familiarized with. Uh, even uh, grandparents who might not normally uh, be using that kind of technology, using a Zoom to... Uh, uh, speak with relatives or watch faraway college graduations. It's become quite the thing. It really has, and you know, I've used Zoom intermittently over the years. And you know, you, usually it was in a case where uh, you know maybe someone from uh, you know Corning or for, you know further away, you know, they, we had a meeting and for whatever reason something came up and they just could not make it. And well, hey, let's you know, let's have a Zoom meeting. We'll, you know, we'll do it that way. Well, okay, you know, that sounds good, and we would do it. But you know, it, it's interesting. You know, what was kind of the exception to the rule is now the rule. And you know, now just about every meeting is is via Zoom. So you know, we're, we're hopefully we'll you know slowly get back to having in person meetings. Um, you know, with the with the city council and uh, you know the board of public works and and so on. But uh, no, we, we we've all been zooming in for these meetings. Uh, uh, you know, for the last several months, and you know, and we continue to do so. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, we'll, eventually we will get back to um, you know normal and have the in person meetings. You know, it's just not it's not the same, right? It's not the same just being stuck in front of a computer screen instead of being in the room when you can. You know, it it just changes the dynamics. Uh, you know, obviously we're still able to conduct business and you know and get things done, but you know it, it's just different. It's just not what we're. It it really is. But it's handy to have Mayor Buckley. With that, we have to go. I want to thank you so much for joining us. Well, thanks for having me on, Brian. I appreciate it. You have a great day.